What's up turtles? It's Crick here with Black Owl Doors and today I wanted to do a video sort of profiling and give some general information about my favorite tree in the whole wide world and that's the Eastern Hemlock. It's Latin name being Suga canadensis and it's not to be confused with uh, the poison hemlock. The poisonous hemlock you may be familiar with that it was made sort of infamous in history. Socrates drank the poison hemlock. That's not that plant. That's a flowering plant, an angiosperm. I'm talking about the eastern hemlock, the conifer tree, which is gymnosperm, which means it has cones. And it actually, the hemlock has female and male cones on the same tree, meaning it can fertilize with itself one tree and then drop fertilized seeds, and then seedlings can come up. And they're really small. They're about two centimeters. I have one in my hand right here that's I found on the ground that's opened up. You can tell the bracts have opened. And they're really small and just, I don't know, really cute. <laughs> You know, the reason why I like these hemlocks so much is the sort of habitat in the forest they're, they're found in, and they sort of create this you know, specific habitat in dense stands of them that where the, the moss, lichens, the epiphytes are able to grow because they, their hemlocks have branches sort of swooping and thick that keep the snow off the ground in the winter. And the animal is really important for wildlife in the winter. It sort of often offers a sanctuary. And that's why I'm sort of gravitated towards them in the winter of the eastern woodlands where all of the deciduous trees drop their leaves. The forest turns really kind of dreary and brown overcast days and sort of really depressing landscape if you're, if you're seeing it all the time. But the sort of hemlock stands offer green year round, which is really cool why I like it. And another characteristic about the hemlock that I can sort of tell from a distance if I'm going to try to ID it or find out what, try to, what kind of tree it is from a distance as opposed to the pines that are found in this area is the really short needles or leaves, which are about one and a half, two and a half centimeters long, as opposed to a pine needle, which might be, you know, eight centimeters. Just from a distance, I can see, look up in the crown, see the foliage, and I can tell if it's a short needle or a long needle, which is, you know, and if I see that, then I'll maybe be more gravitated to go find, check out that habitat. Um, but I'm gonna actually show you a leaf right now. There's another characteristic on the leaves that you can tell it's a hemlock that, a lot of, you know, it's, a, it's another big characteristic. There's white bands. There's a, on the belly of the leaves, you can see there's sort of white bands. Still, they're called stomatal bands. It's the stomata in the leaf, which is part of the leaf that aids and allows for gas exchange, which is really cool, but there's white. Let's see if I find, I'll try to get another little branch. Let's see if it looks any better on these. You can see the white in it. It's another characteristic if you're looking for a, if you're looking for signs of what type of tree it is, if you're unsure. You can also look at the bark. For me personally, I think bark's a really hard indicator to look at. Uh, step over to this tree. This bark is sort of gray, brownish gray with these longitudinal shallow furrows. My finger's tracing. These sort of cavities, how they're running in the tree. Call that furrowed. And these are pretty shallow as sort of conifers can go. You can have pines that have, you know, can be inches thick how deep their furrows will go in the in the bark of old growth, which is really cool. But and the bark actually was used on hemlock for a long time when the when the leather industry was sort of booming in, in the states. There was tannin found in in the hemlock bark, which is used to, to help um, tan hide and leather, but now the hemlock is basically used for sort of the pulp in making in paper and just general sort of construction lumber. There's actually there's a, there's a smaller hemlock over here. You can get another look at the bark. This one's lit up in the sun. Might be a help you see characteristics. You can see because it's a younger tree, you sort of have to really look for the defining characteristics. But you can see the sort of the form of these furrows, as opposed to if it was a solid sort of smooth bark all over the tree. Kind of on a side note, since I'm talking about the eastern hemlock, there's an invasive insect that uh, was thought were brought from Japan. It's called the, the hemlock woolly adelgid, and that's been sort of decimating hemlock stands of not only the, the eastern hemlock, which I'm talking about, which we're looking at here, but also the Carolina hemlock, which is, I think, Suga Caroliniana is its Latin name. But they're really sort of decimating stands in the southeast, and they really can't get a the, the adelgid can't get a, a foothold in the north here because of the colder and longer winters. But in the south, they're really sort of wreaking havoc, and you know it's really sad. Um, but they're kind of a cool, 
cool insect if you like, you know, insects and bugs and whatnot. These have these little mouth parts that they go into and they attach sort of on the ends of the branches towards the, the needle bases and they they suck. They're sap suckers and they I think they I think it's the phloem they're feeding on. I could be wrong. Um, and you know it's kind of it's kind of a shame that you know people have you know effects on the environment, the planet, and, and some of them are very lasting. But this is a uh, Crick talking about my tree, famous or my favorite eastern hemlock. Later, turtles.